Shri Guru Bionamaha. Welcome to our 46th Saturday Online Kashmir Cultural Heritage Awareness Series. We begin with our prayer song by Sri Madhi Krishnaveni. Shri Guru Bionamaha. Nana Chitra Ghadodara Sita Maha Deepa Prabhavaswa Ram Nyanam Yesya to Chakshura Bikarana Dwara Badi Spandate Janam Eti Tameva Bhandaman Bhat Yet samastam jagat tasmai shri guru murtaye namaidam shri dakshina murtaye tasmai shri guru murtaye namaidam shri dakshina we thank uh, Srimadhi Veni Ji for uh, joining us uh, today. She has appeared uh, a few times in our series. We hope to see her again more in our programs. Today's program is continuation of Sri Giridhar Mavidi's Reclaiming Hindu Kashmir Part 2. If you're joining today or watching this later, please watch the previous part one on May 25th. There are many important temples covered there. The key aspect of this presentation is reclaiming the temples abandoned due to reasons we all know and we are talking about it. We thank Sri Kanchi Mutt for our ongoing series and offer our namaskarams to His Holiness Sri Shankar Vijayendra Saraswati Swami. We are very pleased to welcome Sri Giridhar Mamidi once again for part two. Over to you, sir. Namaste, sir. Namaste. Namaste to all your viewers. And uh, my pranamams to His Holiness Shankaracharya Ji. And uh, as you said, you know, uh, it is the duty of every Sanatani to restore, revive, and uh, you know, bring back uh, the uh, ancient glory of our holy Kashmir. And uh, uh, me being me not being a Kashmiri Pandit, I have uh, had the privilege, the anugraha of uh, uh, Parameshwara and uh, Shakti uh, for having blessed me in each of the Kshetras of Kashmir. And uh, as you said, our first part covered some uh, mandirs especially the central Kashmir and the southern part of the Kashmir. When I'm saying Kashmir, I'm not talking about the Jammu and Kashmir state. I'm merely talking about Kashmir Valley. Because Jammu is different, like Vaishnav Devi, Badarwa, Poonch, these are all in Jammu region. We are only focusing on uh, the Kashmir Valley. So in the valley, last in the episode, that is the first part, we covered the Srinagar area and South Kashmir. And this episode, we are going to cover North Kashmir. And North Kashmir is again very rich in many kshetras. Um, majority of them are um, in dilapidated state, abandoned, and uh, just waiting for uh, uh, you know the Sanatanis to come and reclaim the glory. So today, I will share uh, the presentation on... Uh, uh, you know, the north north part of the Kashmir Valley. I hope, uh, Shankarji, can you see the uh, slides? Is it is it visible? Uh, can somebody confirm if it is okay? Yeah, 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 it's visible. It's visible. Temples of North Kashmir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. So let's look at the temples of North Kashmir. So uh, as you can see, the background is again Shira Bhavani or Kir Bhavani. Uh, I've, I've put a snapshot of the map of uh, North Kashmir here. As you can see, uh, Srinagar is to your right hand bottom corner 
and from there uh, you go right up to uh, kupwada shivnag temple and uh, pandav mandir of uri these are all in the border areas on the loc the orange line that you see is the line of control so uh, right up to that spot uh, you know we have many chhatras which uh, we going to see today uh, the most prominent of them of, of course is uh, kheer bhawani mata mandir of uh, tulla mulla uh, in sanskrit it's called shira bhawani um, his holiness uh, uh, vijendra saraswati swami ji and uh, uh, shankar vijendra saraswati ji both of them also visited this uh, mahakshetra as you can see <clears throat> the uh, salagrama murti of mata is in the middle of a natural spring and the water uh, from this spring keeps changing color and i don't want to go deeper into this because i think uh, kheer bhawani has been covered extensively in uh, some of the previous uh, presentations but uh, it is to, it is suffice to say that uh, in the recent past <clears throat> when there were targeted killings of kashmiri hindus uh, this pond uh, is supposed to have turned black so it indicates uh, uh, how the situation in the valley is um, the color of the water uh, actually tells it so that is how it is unfortunately today it is in the uh, control of uh, crpf uh, but uh, it is a safe place to visit and uh, uh, kashmiri pandits visit this place pretty often and offer their prayers Uh, at least once a year majority of the pandit families do visit this place there is a peculiar phenomena uh, inside this temple complex uh, if you look up towards the sky in the middle of uh, the trees you would see a natural formation of bharat the bharat's flag you can see i have taken these photographs in two different seasons one uh, when there was a lot of uh, vegetation in it and another one in chilai kalan when all the leaves had fallen off and uh, the result is same in both the cases you can very clearly see bharat mata the map of bharat uh, this is a very strange phenomena there and uh, uh, we are all proud of this particular phenomena then of course uh, people would have visited gulmarg and in gulmarg you have the maharani shivji mandir which was established by the maharani of uh, jammu and kashmir uh, under dharmarth trust the peculiarity of this is there is a snake uh, design which is etched on the shivling twining the shivlinga so of course when they put lot of uh, decoration one may not be able to see it but uh, if you request the purohit maybe you can see that as well while uh, you are going towards baramulla uh, you get a town called patan patan's original name was pattana uh, so here there are two temples uh, which are uh, destroyed by sikandar bhushkin one is one is called sugandisha temple uh, uh, which is uh, uh, on the outskirts of uh, patan uh, before we enter the town of patan this particular uh, place is there Uh, you can see the beauty of the sculptures even today completely destroyed by sikandar bhushkin and uh, the uh, pedestal or pani vattam of uh, <coughs> shivling is lying there as you can see i'm sure the shivling would have been removed and uh, used um, in the construction material of uh, their religious structures um, as you go into the town next to the railway station of patan uh is this second temple which is shankara gaurishwara temple you can see the murti of ganga in one of the slide in one of the photographs so ganga and yamuna are pretty common sites that one sees in kashmir uh, mandirs so this also uh, even the dilapidated devastated temple you can see the glory that it would have seen in its heydays Uh, there is a small village uh, off the highway called chandarhama um, there is an abandoned shiv mandir there which is under lock and key uh, not a single pandit in this town in this village i took this photograph of the shivling by 
putting my camera through the ventilator and clicking it by a flash. You can see the cobwebs, you can see the kind of uh, muck inside it. And the sadder part of it is the temple compound, which is open for people to do what they want. Uh, there are huge bones of uh, um, cattle, not sheep, big bones of cattle. We don't know if it's buffalo or cows, but then uh, those huge bones are scattered across this mandir. Uh, the name of the village is still Chandarhama, so which is a Sanskrit word, Chandra. So Chandarhama, uh, but sadly, um, you know, this is the fate of uh, this temple. Uh, there is a beautiful lake called Manasbal. Uh, in this Manasbal lake, uh, you have uh, uh, boating and you have uh, gardens there. It's a tourist spot, actually. Uh, next to the uh, Manasbal lake, uh, there is an ancient mandir which was partly excavated. You can actually see Ganesh uh, relief in uh, one of those. Um, but they did not uh, excavate the entire uh, mandir. Uh, they put a, uh, a compound wall around it and the water that is uh, here which uh, uh, oozes out naturally from uh, you know, the mountains has a very peculiar uh, characteristic. Uh, in these photographs you can see I had taken these photographs during the coldest part of the year which is Chile Kala, uh, 40 days of severe winter. During that period even Manasbal Lake had frozen. But whereas this water is not frozen, it's still liquid and it is uh, room temperature. Of course, it is cold, but it is not chill cold. It is uh, of a room temperature and the water that gushes out from this particular pond is used by the villagers even today. Uh, they say it's an archaeologically protected monument, but then like uh, most of them across the country, this of course is open for uh, vandalism and uh, devastation. Uh, recent visit when I went, they had fortified the uh, uh, metal railings around it. If we can't even enter into this place. That's how they have done it. But then we should demand from the government that the full excavation be done and the entire temple, the grandeur of it, should be uh, you know uh, uh, dug up and presented to the uh, Sanatanis. There is a place called Prayag Raj. Uh, in North Kashmir, a little north of uh, Srinagar, where two rivers, Jhelum and Sindh river. Uh, Jhelum, of course, is Vitasta. The second river is Sindh. They call it Sindh. But this is not Sindhu river. Sindhu, it is not Indus. It is a tributary of Jhelum. Jhelum itself is a tributary of Sindhu river. So the Sangam of these two rivers uh, is called Prayagaraj. Uh, the, the, the village name is still called Narayan Bagh, whereas that entire area is called Shadipora. Uh, if you ask any taxi driver, he wouldn't know Prayagraj or Narayan Bagh, but they will immediately know Shadipora. If you want to visit this place, you ask for Shadipora. In the middle of uh, this Sangam, there is a temple and there is the uh, ancient Chinar tree. Uh, this was mentioned uh, in Neemath Puran thousands of years back. So, if you have to reach there, you have to take a boat and go. Uh, of course, there are no boatsmen on a daily basis. But then, uh, if you are going as a team, probably you could request the villages to arrange for one. Uh, on the banks, they have uh, put up a small mandir now. The ancient the old mandir is long destroyed and gone. But there is a shivling with, uh, uh, you know, a completely old, uh, rusted Stalapuran mentioned uh, on it with uh, a shivling. Um, this area, this uh, mandir, I have gone several times and almost all the times I have uh, got the key from a local shop, uh, Muslim shopkeeper and uh, I have seen uh, the pot on top of the shivling always filled with water. Uh, he says that uh, that is his routine. Every day he cleans the temple, puts the water, locks it up and goes back, whether pundits come or not. Um, uh, so that's a very uh, interesting thing that I have seen uh, in this particular mandir. And uh, after 75 years, Kashmiri Pandits performed uh, Kumbh Mela in this particular Sangam uh, a few years back, four or five years back. Unfortunately, as soon as that uh, Kumbh Mela was over, uh, Burhanwani was encountered 
and uh, never again uh, this place uh, saw that kind of a uh, footfall however uh, for south indians especially uh, south indians uh, be it telugu uh, tamilians or kannadigas we have this concept of uh, pushkaralu we call it in telugu where uh, depending on the movement of jupiter brahaspati in each constellation we assume that uh, you know one river in bharat uh, uh, has a visitation from all the uh, mukkoti devatas and so uh, first world days are holy which we call pushkaralu in uh, telugu i'm sure uh, in tamil in kannada you have very similar names uh, so sindhu pushkaralu when uh, pushkaralu happen for uh, indus river lot of travel agents take gullible uh, uh, yatris to this spot and say this is sindhu and so they per- they perform it we would have seen videos photos a lot of tv videos also that uh, they have gone to shrinagar they have gone to kashmir that uh, they took bath in sindhu river sadly this is not sindhu river sindh sindhu river or indus river flows only and only in ladakh in indian territory indian controlled territory it goes into pakistan controlled territory in uh, for, from batalik which is further uh, east of kargil from kargil you have to still come to zajila pass before you enter the valley and high mountain ranges are there indus cannot cross those mountains and enter the valley this river sind uh, what they call as sind everybody forgot its old name this originates near sonmarg and merges with uh, vitasta in uh, this place called narayan bagh so very short small river uh, so this is the confusion lot of uh, tour tour operators uh, um, you know do for gullible people and i'm sure uh, those of you who are watching this would take note of this and uh, told years from now whenever uh, sindhu pushkaralu come uh, please uh, uh, make the people around you aware that this is not the place to go but it is ladakh there is a place called sumbal uh, which is a little further away from uh, the prayagraj where uh, there is an again a very ancient shiv mandir uh, this is uh, part of a uh, ancient uh, uh, chinar tree the tree and mandir everything is in a single compound uh, sadly part of the compound especially the access to the mandir is now taken over by a temple uh, sorry by a school so uh, you will have to go into the school and through a narrow opening behind the school you have to enter into this mandir in fact the open grounds which are left behind the school in the mandir are being used by the school uh, authorities for their uh, uh, parade morning parade and their uh, pt and all that stuff um, so unfortunately this is uh, completely abandoned and left unattended uh, i'm sure so most of you would have seen the movie uh, uh, the kashmir files in that movie the character the uh, actress who played the character sharada uh, her name is basha sumbal uh, her forefathers her uh, ancestry is from this village so uh, her name continues to be sumbal you could actually check her uh, uh, portfolio her sorry her uh, details in our twitter handle as well it is basha sumbal so sumbal sumbli so she's from this place Uh, some time back uh, kashmiri muslims had published one photograph and a news item which had come up uh, where uh, they visited this place washed this place performed uh, you know they poured water on shivling on shivratri where there were no pandits and they said uh, you know we want our pandits back they put placards saying that we want our pandit brothers to come back so there are of course uh, multiple voices in that some kashmiri pandits uh, who are quite bitter about uh, the atrocities that were unleashed on them they say this is all publicity stunt the temple is still under uh, the control of uh, a couple of kashmiri pandits though they don't go there often um, uh, so the 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 narrative put up by the muslims is just a hogwash and eyewash and so one should not believe it i have put both the versions in front of you Uh, it is for you to figure out uh, uh, you know uh, which one to accept or which not to accept but my only request is uh, we as sanatani start visiting such places we would have uh, uh, opportunity to revive such ancient places then in the town of baramulla itself 
there is a huge temple complex. Um, uh, the temple inside is of Raghunath Mandir, but the compound outside is full of shops. Today, sadly, majority of the shops are uh, run by uh, local Muslims. But a few Kashmiri Pandits who returned back to the valley um, decided to go back to, uh, uh, you know, uh, Baramulla. And so we have a few people who are uh, having shops there. There is a cloth shop there and there is a medical shop there. These two are prominent uh, Kashmiri Pandit shops within the compound of Raghunath Mandir. Uh, as you can see, the ancient uh, tantric murtis you can see in the middle slide below. Um, so this is uh, indicating that this place once was a very uh, ancient and prominent place, but sadly it was rebuilt uh, after uh, some. Uh, it was completely destroyed by the iconoclasm of uh, Muslim uh, fundamentalists. In same Raghunath Mandir. Uh, there is a place called Gupta Ganga. Unfortunately, this is, or fortunately, this is inside the CRPF compound. The CRPF camp is there and you need to request them uh, to go into this compound. It is just a shed right now. The main temple was long destroyed. Uh, so inside the temple, there is this Gupta Ganga, the water natural spring which comes out from, uh, uh, you know, the earth uh, below. So they have just put up a small shivling there and a few photographs there. Um, this is again a temple which is waiting to be rebuilt. This is currently under the CRPF camp, uh, under, the, under the control of CRPF. Opposite to this particular uh, mandir, uh, on the banks of Jhelum River, which is Vitasta River, is uh, uh, a place called Koti Tirth. This Koti Tirth uh, is the banks of Vitasta River. Uh, which is very, very holy for uh, Kashmiri Pandits. Uh, like Varanasi, people used to come here uh, to immerse the ashes of their forefathers, their relatives in this particular place. Melas, Tirthas used to happen here. There was a very grand temple once that stood here. Um, sadly, that is all destroyed. Uh, Rashtriya rifles built this temple in pink color that you see right now. Uh, but the Shiv Murti inside, that is an Ek, uh, ek Mukhi Shivling. That means there is a Shivling, but Shiva's face protrudes out of that Shivling. It has uh, his Jata Juta, it has his Trinetra, and uh, he has Nimirina eyes. That is half opened and half closed eyes. Uh, so very beautiful Shivling, but uh, the kind of water that is poured on it, uh, you can see the white strains on it. There's no uh, upkeep of this, unfortunately. Um, so this is again a very ancient uh, mandir that is worth visiting. Uh, in front of this particular uh, Ekmuki uh, mandir at Koti Tirth is uh, a Gurdwara. This Gurdwara was visited by uh, Guru Hargobinji. Hargobinji was uh, a guru before even Guru Tej Bahadur. Uh, Hargobinji had visited valley, he went up to Uri and established many Gurudwaras uh, adjacent to the uh, Hindu temples. Hindu and Sikh were all same at that time. So his uh, idea was that the militant wing of Sanatana Dharma, which was the Sikh Pant, was meant to protect the Hindus. So we see Gurudwaras in majority of the temples, ancient temples, especially on the route visited by Hargobinji. Be it, uh, uh, you know, the one which I showed in the part one, Bich Bihara or Anantanag or this one in Koti Tirth uh, Baramulla uh, or a few more uh, mandirs like this. For instance, in uh, South Kashmir, there is one more Martan Surya Mandir, I said. There is also one Gurudwara. So the Sikh Gurus ensured that uh, their people were here to protect the Hindus. Unfortunately, uh, Hindus uh, were targeted so badly that uh, six, the Sikh Pant could resist to some extent. So while even six lost a lot of people, uh, Hindus lost significantly. And uh, uh, in, in the overall migration, uh, six migration was less. They stayed back to protect their Gurudwaras. And so this Gurudwara is functional. When I met the Gurudwara's uh, chief, he actually said that uh, there were times when they 
had to even feed the terrorists because they they have a langar where free food is offered and these terrorists used to come eat food and go so but then uh, they had their own problems but overall they managed to survive on the photograph to the right hand top you see uh, there is a chadar uh, uh, you know covering a particular yellow thing that is the stump of the tree under which guru hargobind ji sat and meditated so once the tree died they cut the stump and then put it there as reverence to him in same baramulla there is another mandir called shelputri devi mandir uh, this is on the highway which is going to udi just uh, on the highway uh, unfortunately because of uh, floods severe floods in jhelum river the back part of this mandir completely collapsed so behind uh, the mata where you can see a staircase there just behind the staircase the entire area is cracked you can't even go there if you go there you we don't know when it's going to cave in so because of that the water source has got cut off there is no inflow of natural spring water in this and uh, so currently uh, uh, it is it is manned by crpf and crpf uh, uh, jawans only do puja here uh, the government has sanctioned government of jammu and kashmir has sanctioned uh, certain funds for repair of this mandir uh the back part portion which is uh, destroyed is going to be rebuilt the funds have been released and i believe the work is going to start pretty soon very near to udi uh while we are going towards the line of control there is a uh, place called bunyari in bunyari there are several temples ancient temples destroyed uh but this temple is uh, quite uh, unique and significant you can see the color of the stone the color of the stone is like a jade color green color this is called datta mandir of course the original shivling has been long broken and uh, the local crpf have uh, put up a small uh, shiv murti there white murti uh, but uh, in, within the compound you have two shivlings uh, uh, you can see on the photograph to the right top corner with a flag so that is where one can offer uh, water you can do abhisheka but not inside the garbagraha inside the garbagraha they do aarti they do bhajan and it is all upkeep and maintenance is done by crpf uh, during the earthquake it it uh, 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 suffered further damage and so they put that uh, you know you can see on the top uh, something to keep it intact they put uh, metallic rods to keep it in place but this is a wonderful beautiful uh, stone uh, worth visiting while uh, you are going towards udi or line of control bang uh, uh, opposite to udi town or rather outskirts of udi town there is a small uh, place called lagama in fact from lagama you can see udi udi is on the other side of the jhelum river and lagama is on uh, other bank of the jhelum river so there is a mandir uh, Uh, a little uh, uphill which is called pandav mandir uh, you can see the photograph of the shed uh, on uh, in 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 the, in the middle slide top middle uh, slide uh, that was the original mandir which i saw few years back and uh, the murtis inside were of pandavas and bhagwan krishna and there is also a shivling there now the very uh, happy part of uh, this particular story is a sadhu from odisha was living here he collected funds from what source we do not know uh, obviously being a sadhu on the line of control which is so far away from uh, shrinagar he managed to collect funds and he rebuilt this entire mandir what you see the orange color on the right is uh, the mandir as it was rebuilt when i went recently uh, it was undergoing painting work when i went so the murtis uh, were about to be installed when i went there by now it would have been reinstalled so uh, that is a success story that i would see of efforts from uh, sadhu is is just an ordinary sadhu from odisha so when a sadhu from odisha could do it uh, the sanatanis the hindus from rest of bharat could join hands with our kashmiri pandits and do wonders to revive our mandirs this is a great example in uh, that particular direction
so um, you see uh, this is uh, again a huge shivling which is in uh, downtown handwara handwara town again saw many many terrorist incidents in uh, some time back but uh, right now handwara uh, is decent uh, decently peaceful and uh, handwara actually sees lot of uh, uh, people joining uh, paramilitary forces and army uh, huge queues you would see whenever there is a recruitment announcement but unfortunately uh, kashmiri pandits have more or less vacated this town this town has a beautiful uh, uh, shiv mandir uh, shivling itself is pretty huge this is just behind the punjab national bank i just put, put the photograph for uh, uh, you know coordinates and this is in the heart of the town of handwara there is uh, another uh, mandir in handwara which is uh, if you see the google earth it shows as ganesh mandir but then uh, inside that is a shivling this again is completely abandoned and uh, it's not been open for ages uh, even the keys i could not get the keys for this the local said the keys are with some pandits who are no more staying there uh, probably we need to check with the pandit samaj in shrinagar so this is uh, but it has huge compound and it's just lying uh, abandoned in uh, handwara uh, very close to handwara there is a place called a village called badarkol the name of the village itself is called badarkol near wadipora um, badarkol itself is a crude form of badrakali so you need to climb around 300 350 steps to go up hill where there was a uh, very ancient badrakali mandir Uh, the original murti of badrakali mandir was blasted by putting gelatin sticks by terrorists completely destroyed <clears throat> i believe some pieces of it have been preserved in uh, jammu museum i can't confirm it but uh, somebody said that uh, i need to see next time when i go to jammu probably i'll verify that but uh, it was left abandoned for quite some time then uh, rashtriya rifles Uh, rebuilt this mandir and in installed uh, mata murti inside that you can see the photograph of the mata murti also and beautifully uh, they painted lot of shivjis uh, durga and so many things creativity of our jawans they are just not brute uh, uh, you know killing machines in uh, wars but they are also sanatanis as you can see the kind of beautiful paintings they have done to the walls of this uh, to the right hand you see this uh, photograph uh where there is a tree uh, inside that uh, uh, complex which is uh, wrapped in red uh, cloth uh, you can see the branches are burnt there are no leaves on it this was the tree below which the murti was there which the terrorists blasted so all the branches are burnt and the tree is literally dead when the rashtriya rifles team wanted to uh, uh, cut this tree Uh, when they were reconstructing this mandir when they started cutting the tree red color fluid started coming out oozing out of this particular uh, tree indicating blood it was uh, having the prana shakti of mata in that it literally though the tree was dead it was oozing red color fluid so they finally decided not to cut it they just covered it in uh, red cloth and left it inside the mandir so you see the uh, mata's murti in this photograph this particular tem, uh, tree is just behind that murti within the temple complex this is a great miracle and um, uh, uh, i urge everybody to uh, you know mark this in your calendar whenever you plan to visit kashmir further towards uh, uh, line of control in kupwara district Uh, there is a place called trehgam in trehgam uh, you can see the photograph below there's a huge masjid to the right and to the uh, to the left of the masjid is a small shiv mandir um, but the water pond in front of it uh, there is no water today because it has gone for some cleaning works but uh, this water uh, a lot of uh, people who talk about uh, secularism they say this water is shared by muslims and hindus amicably that's what they say so uh, how amicably they are sharing you can see the photograph uh, there is an encroachment into this water pond 
the platform from the masjid, they have put pillars and have extended it. You can see in both the photographs where they have extended their platform into the pond, occupying what is what is left of the temple lands today. Originally, the masjid itself was a temple. A temple was destroyed and a masjid was built. And uh, uh, the uh, Kashmiri Pandits of those days built a small temple next to the masjid. That is the real story. This is called Chitragupta Mandir. Um, and uh, uh, you, know, the, you know the antiquity of using these names. Pretty ancient place, but the Shivling and the Mandir could have been of a recent origin. But the Chetra is pretty old. And uh, uh, you know uh, the, the ancient temple obviously has been confiscated, destroyed by you know who. If you, uh, between uh, this Trehgam and Kupwada uh, is another place called Tikkar. In Tikkar, there is this third Kheer Bhavani Mata Mandir. In my first part, I had shown two Kheer Bhavani Mata Mandirs. Sorry, one Kheer Bhavani Mata Mandir, which is in Mansgam. Now, in this presentation, I am showing you two. The first slide which I showed was of uh, uh, Tulla Mulla, which is... Uh, uh, in Gandharbal, and this is the second uh, Kheer Bhavani Mata Mandir in Kupwada. Here, this is a huge area, in spite of certain encroachment, this huge area, and there are many mandirs here, and the uh, Pandit Samaj is building uh, uh, guest house here, and uh, uh, I have seen the progress of this guest house. It is almost ready for occupation in the next few months. You can actually safely go and stay here. <coughs> this is again protected by CRPF, and uh, CRPF uh, team itself does puja most of the time. There is a temple committee which comes from Kupwada and elsewhere to take care of the uh, matters of this particular mandir. So pandits are seriously involved in this. The photographs of many of their gurus are uh, kept here in this mandir, including uh, uh, you know uh, the ones who left uh, uh, Sharda Peet uh, just before. Uh, uh, the partition and be just before Pakistan has uh, taken over that particular place. So this is another temple in Bandipora. Uh, this is, uh, you can see the murtis which are pretty corroded, eroded. Uh, but as usual, like most temples, this is uh, destroyed and they put up a new mandir there. Uh, but you can see the murtis, uh, which are uh, pretty ancient and which are, uh, uh, you know, completely corroded. Uh, the beauty of this particular temple is the uh, natural spring water, which is coming from the mountains, the stream splits into two just before this mandir. And it circles this mandir and goes further down. So it's a very beautiful place to visit. Then there is uh, this Abhinav Gupta cave in Birwa. Birwa is a town uh, in North Kashmir, uh, which is derived from the word Bhairava. Uh, Abhinav Gupta is supposed to have meditated here. But unfortunately, you can see the green flags. This is being uh, appropriated by the Muslims. And uh, when Kashmiri Pandits tried to restart Yatra to Abhinav Gupta, there was huge protest from there and they were not allowed to use the traditional route. Uh, we should ask the government to restore this. Uh, there is a gentleman by name Javed Beg, uh, who is from this place, Birwa. Uh, he, uh, uh, I met him and I've interviewed him in my recent visit. He has taken it upon himself that he is going to restore the Birwa Yatra, Abhinav Gupta Yatra and he is propagating Abhinav Gupta big time. Some of you can follow his Twitter handle. Uh, he is like completely out and out uh, uh, Bharatiya defending his uh, Hindu past and uh, uh, castigating uh, the radicalized parts of his own religion. Um, so we have people like that in the valley who are risking their lives to speak the truth and protect uh, Sanatana Dharma. There is a Sharda Mata Mandir in Bandipura. 
uh, you can see the murtis also again you can see the ekmukhi shivling you can see the tantric murtis and even mata's murtis are saligrams uh, pretty ancient but as usual like most mandirs there are hardly any kashmiri pandits visiting it um, uh, where, you know one or two come once in a while and then just uh, clean it up keep it ready and go uh, or uh, once a year there will be some havan and some puja otherwise uh, it is just waiting for all of us to visit when you go towards uh, uh, kargil towards ladakh uh, uh, northeast uh, you get a town called kangan and from kangan there is a diversion a little further 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 to uh, further east from kangan is sonmarg and uh, on the same route you get baltal from baltal uh, is the second route to amarnath uh, some of you would have gone to amarnath you would have heard of baltal route but instead of uh, going further uh, from kangan towards baltal if you take a left turn and go north of it you get a town called naranag naranag is again a very ancient place you can see the snapshot uh, right hand below you can see the extent of the temple it's huge uh, temple complex multiple temples and a huge area this was built almost 1000 uh, years back and uh, you can see the shiv murtis uh, chiseled uh, in all the play on, on the rocks around that um, where the natural spring is coming up only one shivling that too cracked which is left to sky where uh, its gopuram is completely destroyed is available uh, here um, from this spot onwards that is uh, from uh, uh, naranag uh, this is the last motorable road point from here uh, two day trekking uh, one has to do to reach a place called nara uh, uh, harmukh parvat or gangbal that's called gangbal yatra if you see the photograph to the right of the harmukh parvat if i did not tell you that this is harmukh parvat it is so easy for people to get confused and think that this is kailash it is very similar to kailash like the kailash parvat where just below the kailash parvat you have two lakes which is manas sarovar and uh, rakas lake or rakshasa lake so is the case with harmukh parvat again this is not either hari or hara it is harmukh parvat uh, here also just below that you have two lakes called gangbal and nandikol 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 or nandikol so two lakes are there and kashmiri pandits go on a yatra here uh, used to do for thousands of years but after the militancy came this was completely stopped and this has been revived about a decade back um so now kashmiri pandits do visit this once a year under heavy uh, security uh, protocols um on ashtami ganga ashtami they call ganga ashtami which falls on the fourth day of ganesh chaturthi ganesh chaturthi is Ch chaturthi which is four uh, and then on four days after that is ashtami so on that day they reach gangbal and perform pindadan to their forefathers so uh, you can see the gangbal uh, lake here and you can see the kashmiri pandits performing uh, shraad the pindadan there and you see kashmiri pandits putting their symbols om trishul swastika and all uh, it's a small photograph i am not too sure whether you can read it but to the right hand corner of that rock where uh, kashmiri pandit uh, profil but he is uh, painting it uh, there are muslim names on that so after the pandits leave Uh, these people come back desecrate it again put their names and create nonsense uh, but then pandits have not given up sadly it is only the kashmiri pandits who are going there and uh, i happen to be the only non kashmiri pandit who visited there uh, in the recent past i sincerely urge all of you to make a trip to gangbal whoever is going to amarnath kindly go to naranag and from naranag you can go to this place um but lot of western tourists come there for camping hiking and they put up tents there and they enjoy there whereas we have refused to go we have completely abandoned it this can revive this can only revive if we the rest of uh, bharat sanatanis we start going to this particular yatra often uh, of course the kashmiri pandit samaj will be able to help you uh, but then 
uh, we should start making this part of the Amarnath Yatra so that this will revive to its old glory. Uh, further from Kangan towards Sonmark, there is a small diversion and uh, it goes to a village called Ganiwan. Uh, in Ganiwan, in the middle of the river, uh, there is a natural formation of Ganesh. You can see the Ganesh's trunk and you know you can see the face. So um, uh, the Kashmiri pundits, uh, uh, you know, just applied Sindhur on that and left it there. Um, so nobody would even know that such a beautiful uh, natural formation is available. Uh, this is off circuit. Thousands of people travel uh, very close to this road to Amarnath, but nobody bothers to go to this place. This is a very peaceful place, secured place. So I would urge people, whoever is going to Amarnath via Balthal, should visit uh, Ganivan at least. And uh, at least some of them able-bodied people should go to Naranag and thereon to uh, Gangbal as well. <clears throat> Further north uh, from Bandipura is what is called as a Gurez Valley. It is nothing short of Switzerland. Probably this is more beautiful than Switzerland. Switzerland at least is contaminated with tourist flows, inflows. Whereas Gurez is not at all uh, contaminated. I was surprised to see one small cave-like place where there was a shivling even on the highway in Gurez, inside, deep inside Gurez. Uh, but um, the more important feature of this place is the river that flows through is called Kishan Ganga. Uh, you know, 100% of this place are Sunni Muslims. There is not a single Hindu here. And they don't even speak Kashmiri language. They speak Sheena language. Uh, yet, the name of the river is still Kishan Ganga. Uh, whereas, the, as soon as the river crosses into Pakistan-occupied Jammu Kashmir, they have renamed it as Neelam River. They call it Neelam Ghati. Whereas, we call it Kishan Ghati. So, uh, this is an area which is completely pro-Bharat. Uh, there, th this area has not produced a single terrorist. And so, the rulers that ruled from Srinagar, they uh, completely ignored this place. There is no development in this place. Uh, the power situation is they get only 2 or 3 hours power per day. 21, 22 hours, there is no power in this place. There is no hospital. Uh, they depend on the army. There is no sanitation. Nothing. Uh, the rulers have completely abandoned this place because these, these people did not uh, uh, vouch the separatist ideology of the rulers in Srinagar. Uh, sadly, even after Article 370 has been uh, diluted, uh, not much attention has been given to this place. Though Modi ji had inaugurated the Kishanganga dam here, unfortunately, a lot more needs to be done and uh, their patriotic uh, feelings should be uh, supported, encouraged and should be brought into mainstream. Uh, maybe uh, when we do another presentation on how do we reclaim uh, the areas lost uh, to Pakistan, I would mention uh, what we can do. Uh, just to say that the Sheena language has to be mainstreamed. It has to be brought into uh, Srinagar's uh, uh, academia and probably we should start giving Sahitya academies and other Puraskars to Sheena uh, uh, people who write in Sheena language. Sheena language uh, has many similarities to Dravidian languages. For instance, in Tamil, you say, you when you have to call in somebody to come close to you, you say Ingwa. Even in Sheena, they say Ingwa. Ingwa is the term they use for calling somebody there. So many Dravidian words, uh, which are still uh, remnants of the past of uh, this particular land. So there's a lot more to explore and a lot more to take these people into our fold. In Gurez Valley, uh, there is a last village called Tarbal. As you can see to the top left, uh, I was performing puja uh, to the river. This is the northern part from the river from here takes a turn and beyond the green uh, hill that you see in, in the background is uh, the Pakistan occupied territories. Uh, this is north of Sharda Mandir in uh, occupied uh, Pakistan occupied Jammu Kashmir. So this is about 40-50 kilometers north of that. So the puja that we do, uh, we uh, uh, assume that it goes to the feet of Mata. 
this is north of uh, uh, you know that particular place so this is a village called tarbal um, there are three villages uh, from a town called kanzal one uh, you can look up in the map you have to turn uh, west from uh, kanzal one you get uh, baktor ismat and tarbal three villages uh, tarbal is the last village after that uh, the pojk starts Uh, this was, I believe, one of the routes to go to Sharda Peet in uh, uh, very, very ancient times. There were three, four routes. This was one of them. Um, but maybe this is time. This is, it is time for us to start visiting this place and offer our prayers to Sharda Mata here, so that uh, this reaches our feet. Now, briefly, I will go through temples of occupied Kashmir. which is in pakistani control so of course we all know the sharda peet uh, which is in a village called shardi uh, this is in kishan ganga kishan ghati unfortunately they call it neelam valley uh, people like ravindra pandita and others uh, have been trying to access this place uh, the protocols to go to this place uh, uh, unfortunately pakistan has not accepted uh, they have opened the udi road for sunnis of kashmir and uh, so for, for kashmiris and they opened uh, uh, poonch ravla court in jammu area for, for muslims of jammu they did not open the sharda route for hindus nor did they open the route from kargil to skardu for the shias of uh, kargil and uh, uh, ladakh so pakistan uh, has only focused on allowing sunnis and not others sadly government of india of those days have accepted it had we insisted that uh, our hindus also should have access to sharda peet it would probably could have been a different story now of course it is impossible to go this go to this place because uh, we understand that they have put anti aircraft battery within the compound of this particular temple hoping that uh, we will not try to take off uh, those um, uh, guns Uh, for the fear that we may destroy whatever is left of the sharda mandir so they are playing a very dirty game and then in skardu there is manthal buddhas even now um, north of skardu uh, and the hill on top of it i believe there was a shiv mandir which the people sealed it before they came back to the indian side of kashmir when pakistan raided it um uh, so that is something which is sealed hopefully it is secured now maybe at some point in time when we can take back the pojk we will probably go and reclaim it i have also heard the names of the mountains are ganesh parvati and so many things in uh, near skardu uh, uh, which uh, were the ancient old names we don't know what new names the islamic dispensation would have given there and in gilgit baltistan also there is this great karga buddha as you can see and uh, in a place called uh, uh, nagar hunza nagar uh, there is this buddha's painting beautiful paintings of buddha uh, unfortunately this is going to be submerged by daimar basha dam being built by china uh, this is our sovereign territory this is bharat's legal territory sadly pakistan and china are completely devastating it and uh, towards jammu area what we call as western jammu uh in mirpur area there is the destroyed ragunath mandir and then there is uh, the mangla devi temple uh in mirpur uh, which is again in pojk uh in baltistan you can see a shivalaya which is destroyed so the remnants of those temples are still available in uh, pojk the mangla dam especially when the mangla dam was built the great mangla mandir was completely submerged and the village was completely submerged and uh, Uh, uh this photograph of the mangla the mata mandir you are seeing because the water level the water table has significantly gone down in the mangla dam the sad part of it is the mangla dam is in pojk but the water is completely taken to islamabad from here and the locals are starved of water they do not have water uh, all our ancient temples are submerged in the uh, backwaters of that particular dam so now in conclusion let's see what has happened to the paradise on earth jannat they call it this is jannat so what happened to this paradise 
you see we have the world knows it that the instrument of accession is with us you saw the instrument of accession in part 1 there is no dispute as far as the instrument of accession is concerned because 525 other uh, principal princely states have merged in, with the same document there is no dispute about it so uh, 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 but then what did we do for the past 25 30 years we have completely abandoned kashmir we the rest of bharatiyas we have abandoned kashmir for the fear of the gun for the fear that somebody would kill us we never went there though we keep talking kashmir is ours kashmir is kashyapa muni's mahabhumi kashmiri shaivism we talk all but do we really go the kind of kshetras i have shown how many of us really know about it maybe kashmiri pandits who belong to those areas they know it what about the rest of uh, us is it not our duty to know it we abandoned it when we abandon it what happens assuming that you have a property in your village you have not seen it for 25 years what happens to it all those properties would be infested with trees bats pests right abandoned properties will be completely uh, taken over by pests bats and locusts and things like that sadly our kashmir our sanatana kashmir is taken over by these pests bats and termites as you can see even on the school building they have written go india go war till victory indian dogs go back uh, burhan is alive so these are the kind of slogans uh, all across the valley these people have put up hizbul mujahid we want freedom azadi 8 lakh indian uniformed terrorists versus defenseless kashmiris so uh, uh, two of them we want freedom and that 8 lakh uh, uh, indian terrorists these two are in the main uh, jamia masjid of shrinagar so they say our indian army is terrorists who told them 8 lakhs are there you know but then it's a narrative they build up versus defenseless kashmiris every stone is worse than a bomb sorry worse than a bullet so many of our soldiers have been injured and the trauma is so horrible but then this is the narrative these are the pests that have infested our kashmir because we abandoned kashmir and you know what happened to our pandit uh, samaj the temples are burned down you can see the burnt pandit houses near amarkol mandir uh, uh, in downtown shrinagar and at martan and many others but then nothing not not everything is lost there is hope some 26 and not temples have been restored i showed you a few of temples which are being restored by the crpf by the pandit samaj uh, certain yatras have been restored um, and some new temples are being built so some activity is still going on similarly the residents of two three places like machil sector gurez valley and kargil are not against bharat uh the, the 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 separatist ideology has not completely taken over these people uh these these people are not as radicalized as people in the shrinagar valley similarly thanks to amarnath yatra where so many tourists amarnath yatra just started 3 days back um it provides employment to so many thousands of kashmiris and so it has created not just the tourism industry but it has created a vested interest in them what they earned during this one 40 days of amarnath yatra will sustain them for the rest of their life sorry sir rest of the year so that is a kind of a ecosystem that has developed just imagine if most of these kshetras are revived there is an interest of the local population to maintain peace so it is in their interest that the revival will help them help us and help revive sanatana dharma and please understand all encounters of terrorists that take place are happening because we are getting intelligence and intelligence comes from local kashmiris crpf and army who go there can't understand kashmiri language they don't speak kashmiri language but then oh, who is tipping them off that the terrorists are hiding in a certain building in a certain village it is a local population who is telling them so you see that uh, this is uh, something which we need to nurture maybe the same people will actually go out and pelt stones because the terrorists actually 
uh, watch uh, who has not in, from which house did people not contribute for stone pelting so if anybody has not come out and uh, pelted stones or shouted against us probably they will target and kill them so for their survival they might uh, some some people would have come out and pelted stones i am not saying that this is the majority probably they are in minority majority are radicalized and they pelt stones agreed but then that minority are actually the informers they are passing on the information if they did not pass on the information it would have been impossible for us to fight these terrorists how are we able to neutralize because the local population is giving us information this is what we need to understand and uh, as i said um, in teethwal bang on the line of control sharda mata mandir is being built by ravindra pandita and his team this mandir will be seen by pakistani rangers right in front of their eyes so i am sure whenever the shelling again restarts they would target this place probably i don't know uh, but then uh, it is like we are able to show in a completely muslim area where not a hindu not a single hindu leave uh, lives we are able to build a uh, kashmiri pandit samaj is able to build a uh, sharda mandir so this is a great achievement so the success stories we need to uh, celebrate as well similarly you see the authorities are trying to reclaim the space they are painting this thing uh, with uh, you know they are erasing them we want freedom erased you know azadi go india go all erased <clears throat> so the authorities are also fighting back and psychological battle also is being fought you see the slogan says burhan is alive somebody has written burhan is not alive see look at the narrative go india go they changed it to good india good see so it is like and then uh, they have removed all that uh, in the comp that uh, picture on the top the long uh, wall is the wall of the gurudwara in uh, baramulla so they had written these slogans on the wall of the baramulla so everything has been erased and om has been put there jai hind has been put there <clears throat> so authorities are fighting back it is a day to day every day's battle so what should we do the rest of bharat what are we supposed to do we should not expect kashmiri pandits to fight it alone it's impossible when they go there they are slaughtered like uh, hapless lambs so they are they're too scared i mean rightfully so they 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 went through hell so they cannot take the risk of going back so easily so kashmir is ours as much as it belongs to the kashmiri pandits each one of us should start feeling that kashmir belongs to us and what should we do we should start going there more often the more you go to kashmir the more it belongs to you the more you are just an armchair cricketer or a whatsapp jockey just sending messages forwarding messages uh, talking in air it doesn't help then what do we do we all believe sanatanis believe in prana shakti and daivi shakti we should go to these mandirs we should go to these temples perform our pujas abhishekas yagnas and pray to bhagwan pray to mahakal pray to mata for the unity integrity and safety of our kashmir and the various kshetras of kashmir by uh, organizing webinars like this uh, like how kanchika mukoti uh, and uh, uh, madhyama uh, uh, teams are doing it we should spread this awareness of kashmir its history its culture its problems politics events we should spread this awareness among our own people so that at least some of them would emerge out of this to go and uh, try and reclaim some aspects of kashmir then of course shankara peethas akhadas mats swami ji's everybody has a role to play they need to visit kashmir and its temples the more they visit the valley the more uh, uh, of their sishyas and their parampara they will start going there that is how we reclaim it and we are so proud and honored that it is swami jayendra saraswati only shankaracharya who has gone there along with shankar vijayendra saraswati swami uh, who has gone to kashmir uh, in the recent past in the last 4 uh, 5 decades we, we we sincerely pray to the other peethas other shankaracharyas other akhadas and mathadipatis to kindly do take the example of jayendra saraswati swami ji and shankara vijayendra saraswati swami ji both of them their example visit kashmir go to all these places which i said and 
their tapas shakti if they uh, do dhyana tapas puja there it will have a cascading effect in reviving the sanatan dharma then of course academia sports bodies cultural groups have to engage the kashmiris we see the moment we see a kashmiri we think is a terrorist we have to change our attitude whether we like it or not they are part of our country and they are bharatiyas so if we have to revive it we don't have an option but to engage them if some of us are in academia maybe give them opportunity let them come here on a summer course or maybe a short term 3 4 month course or maybe let them come and present some papers if you are uh, part of some sports bodies give opportunity there to their players to come and play here if you are a cultural group if you are organizing a music festival call those people to present their music here you know we need to engage with the community in kashmir so that is very critical so a few points of what happened after the dilution of article 370 and 35a what article 370 and 35a did was it gave a sense of separate identity to the people of the valley that has been removed now. they are as indian as you and i as bharatiya as you and i so that separate feeling that we have dual citizenship is gone for good so they they may have some resistance because they grew up in a certain way for so many years it may take a while but they have no alternative they are just like any of us they have the same rights and same obligations like you me and anybody else so that identity has been removed that is a greatest achievement of a dilution of article 370 and 35a similarly pojk refugees uh, who never got uh, domicile rights in the state of all got domicile rights now similarly sc sts uh, who were had the privileges in the rest of the country they were uh, denied them in uh, the valley uh, in in the state now all of them have got those uh, rights back grassroot level democracy of panchayat system has been strengthened significantly and then pro india forces who were silent till now have all op- opened up their voices in on january 26th now sajid yusuf and his team have hoisted the national flag atop the gantagar which is uh, lal chowk which is famous kashmir the moment you see any kashmir uh, curfew debate you see the lal chowk with the clock tower he went and hoisted national flag on top of it and he and his team have taken a huge indian flag paraded in front of mahbooba mufti's house in front of uh, farooq farooq abdullah and uh, umar abdullah's house in uh, gukkar uh, road so it is the local people who are the pro india forces are now gaining strength similarly our enforcement directorate cbi and other agencies now have full jurisdiction of the state earlier because of article 370 these people could do nothing there now you are able to investigate how the money was looted who all are involved how the terror funding is happening so once the terror funding uh, people have been arrested people who are generating the funds suddenly you see all stone painting has stopped and where has it shifted it has shifted to kanpur and we know when they pelt the stones on kanpur the bulldozers will come on saturday so uh, this kind of uh, uh, control take over of the narrative by the state has significantly improved in the valley as well similarly the only dampener is the temples that the government has promised that they will repair uh, still needs to take place probably we need to talk to the governments maybe we should request swami ji uh, to speak to uh, you know the government requesting them to uh, allocate funds Uh, give directions so that a committee is formed, a trust is formed with various Kashmiri Pandit Samaj and maybe Shankara Charya Ji himself and maybe a few others. Uh, and then a serious, dedicated focus is given to reviving these temples. And then, what is our final target? We need the restoration of the entire state of Jammu Kashmir. as was handed over to us by raja hari singh we need to see this map in full we don't want to see line of control line of actual control all these names we don't want to see everything should be restored to us we need to restore our sharada peak in its full glory and we need to revive the sharada lipi the sharada script which has been replaced by urdu script even for kashmiri language 
We need to revive the Sharada script. And last words, last but not the least, if you have to reclaim Kashmir, we have to go there. As I said, I'm repeating it. Remember, the more you go to Kashmir, the more we can reclaim it. And always and always and always proudly reclaim Kashmir Bharatiya legacy. It was, it is, and will always be part of Bharata Varsha. We should never have any doubts in its legality, in its cultural integration with us, in our claim on the entire state of Jammu Kashmir. Dhanyavad. So let's uh, pray to Sharada Mata when we close uh, this session. Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmira Puravasini. <coughs> Vam Aham Prataye Nityam Vidya Dhanam Sa Devi. Namaste. Thank you, sir. Um, before I make some comments, let us quickly go through some comments. This is from Dr. Nyanam. Very interesting and clear description of the temples. Feeling tempted to visit. That's what I keep seeing from a lot of people. There is another comment. Great, sir. Very clear explanation and description about temples of Kashmir. Everybody tempted to visit. I think you you created the temptation today. Yeah, there are so many um, messages. I keep uh, reading. There is another one. Highly inspiring speech, sir. Thank you very much. The Shankarji, summary that you made is uh, very Shankarji, clear and very yeah, nicely Shankarji, done. Shankarji, I just want to say, those of them who want to visit the valley... Those of them who want to see these temples, because uh, any tour operator you go, you go through any web portal, any tourist operator, they will only take you to four places. One is Srinagar, second is Gulmarg, third is Sonmarg, and fourth is Pahalgaon. Within that, they will quote many names like Chashme Zahi, Mughal Gardens, blah, blah. But it is this, this four. They will not take you to any other place. For instance, they will not take you to Shopian, they will not take you to Tikkar. They will not take you to any of these places. What I am suggesting is, those of them who are interested, maybe they can contact you or uh, whatever it is. So, we can consolidate, pool them and then plan a yatra for them. And I will involve the Kashmiri Pandits. They will organize a yatra at a very affordable price. And we will visit all these Kshetras. We will take them to all these Kshetras. I have done this yatra just recently from 1st May to 10th May. A group of about, uh, uh, 20, uh, about 25, 30 people have gone, visited all these places, which I showed now. Majority of them, they went and visited. For 10 days, they visited. So, um, uh, the Kashmiri Pandit Samaj has taken them. So, I am just offering those of them who are really keen to visit, they may contact you. And then, if you could pass on their details, we can organize a trip for them to see all these places beyond the traditional four places. No, I could see that. See, I I probably visited some 22 temples. After going through your presentation, I could identify only two in that. One is this uh, uh, Shir Bhavani temple. For, uh, Kupwara, I didn't go. I go to Tulamula. And the other one is Raghunath Mandir, where I remember you're going to talk about the pharmacist. I remember spending time in the shop. He was telling he was the only Hindu around. He doesn't care and he's going to continue that. I hope. Is safe and sound there. No, uh, it's really fascinating. So, U.S. is not of academic interest. I could see that. Your presentation is not of any academic interest. This is very practical approach. And uh, also, the terrorists who are trying to hack our uh, system last week, they probably found out you don't mean taking million Indians from reclaiming Kashmir. You are talking about reclaiming our own temples. That is the theme of your presentation today. Maybe we could we could involve Jyesha Mata where they have accommodation and Bharat Bhushan, but also spoke. We can coordinate with him and prepare some itinerary and then plan some trips. From there, one week should be enough for people to come around. I would, I, I would say 10 days because I mean it depends on the convenience of people. In one week, you can cover some. But if it is a 10-day trip, 
uh, you will be able to cover literally what all I showed. You could cover it. When you go South Kashmir, it takes about two days to cover the whole of South Kashmir. Same thing with uh, again, you know, North Kashmir is like a, a three routes. There is one route which goes towards Kargil. There is one route which goes to Tullamulla, you know, or uh, goes to Gurez Valley, and then there is a third route which goes to Baramulla, Kupwada, and you know that kind of a stuff. So it takes a it it the logistics take a little while. So if you if people can spare ten days time, uh, we will be able to give them such a glimpse of Kashmir that uh, they would never have seen it in their life. What they see in these four places is not Kashmir, literally. Right? They are conducted. In fact, even in Srinagar, they only see Shankaracharya Hill. They take a few selfies in Dal Lake and uh, Mughal Gardens, Cheshme Sahi, come off. That's it. For instance, the majority of them have not gone to uh, Durgnagh yeah. Mandir in Dal Gate. Majority of them would not have you know, gone to Panchmukhi Anuman Mandir. Right? There are, um, uh, or Chakreswari Mata Mandir or uh, Verinath. So I'm saying. Uh, if uh, people are interested in uh, uh, such a yatra, uh, we can definitely help them. Uh, and I mean, it depends. If if one week, of course, they may not be able to see a few. If it is ten days, probably we can cover more. That's the only thing. No, you was you was uh, for those who are watching. Bharat Bhushan but of uh, Jayeshra Mata was mentioning about twenty thousand rupees for a week. That includes stay, um, accommodation, and food. Yeah, around they that. Arrange, so it, for, 10 yes, days, yes, uh, for 10 days, we uh, we did it for about 21, 22,000 rupees for 10 days. It will be nice to visit all those places. Now we have wealth of information. Uh, you have any plans to publish all this, like a book form? Probably, yes. Um, currently, as I told you, Shankarji, offline, uh, I am now working on... Uh, the Kshetras of Mahabharata. So, um, the places which are mentioned in Mahabharata, where are they now? We know, we, we would have heard of those names. We would have Anga, Vanga, um, uh, Kuru, uh, Magadha, you know, uh, Panchala. We would have heard these names. But where are they? You know, that is what uh, I am trying to explore and uh, managed to get uh, roughly about 100 names. Majority of them I visited myself. Once that project is over, then I, next one I will take up is Kashmir. No, but it's really Never. fascinating. And uh, I, I have to mention that uh, Giridharji is a non-Kashmiri. And all the presentations are all first-hand. You took those photographs. They are all most recent. That's very, very impressive and fascinating. And people are very keen now to undertake this pilgrimage. Like you mentioned, that's the only way, only way, way we could reclaim uh, Kashmir back. So don't forget your promise that you're going to come back and make another presentation on uh, uh, military strategy. I don't know. We need yeah. to get approval from uh, Ministry of Defense for that. <laughs> but, no, uh, I'm not going to talk <laughs> military strategy. I would say uh, non-military strategy. So finally, we leave it to the military. Once we have done whatever I suggest, um, military knows best how to take it back. So military strategy is not what I'm going to talk. I will talk everything else except the military strategy. So now, but you you proved from this uh, reclaiming Kashmir. A lot of people call me. What is this topic about? <laughs> now they understood what you really talk. Yeah, I said at the end, you see, we need to reclaim the whole state of Jammu and Kashmir. We mm -hmm. need to reclaim Sharda Peet. We need to reclaim Sharda Lipi. Look, it's just not geography, it is a culture. We need to re reclaim everything. That's I'm so happy thing. that we had uh, Sri Ravindra Panditaji already in our program. You know, he already covered and uh, you should be very happy that you talked about it. Uh, he said he will also come back and take us one day to that uh, Mandir, you know, once it's Tietwal, all built. Tietwal, yeah. Tietwal. So, thank you so much. I will plan a slot for you. Now we are booked up to October. We have more speakers joining and so we are doing a small service um, identifying all these opportunities and then we will present. So, look forward to seeing you again sometime maybe in uh, October and uh, thank you once again for your time and in spite of your busy schedule I know that you are traveling and then somehow managed to land today for our presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
we once again uh, thank all our viewers those who joined today please watch our previous one that must that was last saturday that is part 1 that covered most of the important temples that we are we keep on hearing and we are aware of and then today he covered many temples that we have not seen or heard uh, some are being uh, rebuilt and still uh, activities are uh, taking place the uh, puja activities and all we uh, thank uh, once again vdsp for the streaming and also dinamala our leading tamil newspaper for covering our uh, saturday series we hope to see you again next saturday from next saturday uh, we are going to have a new series called book review as you know there are lots of books on kashmir so every month we are going to cover a book next one uh, is going to be a book by um, the dr uh, magesh kaul he was a speaker and he's going to talk about his book and the presentations are going to be um introduction from all by rogini vaishnavi rogini vaishnavi also appeared in our program and she will be making a presentation or introducing these books one book um every month most likely by the first uh, saturday of the month we will do that thank you once again and uh, we look forward to seeing you next saturday 7 pm jay jay shankara hari hari